It is so difficult to see black on red. It's crazy. It's crazy what some of the people who design these jerseys and uniforms come up with, man. I'll tell you. I just want, I, I just please take into consideration your announcers and everybody looking. So here is the first draw, and it is going to uh, be picked up by Penfield. So Penfield with an opportunity to draw first blood. And uh, let me see, Abby Herod versus Aaliyah Petrie, and that's going to be a good one. That'll be a lot of fun to watch. So two 25-minute halves, and Penfield going to settle into offense. And between you and I, I, I there's no way in all get out I can see the numbers on the front of those jerseys. <laughs> You see what I'm saying, Jeremy? There's absolutely no way whatsoever. So I'll do the best I can. Penfield with the ball at the top of the fan right in the slot. In the slot is just that area going between the two hash marks. I can tell you that's number 24 with it. Eliza for Clara. She's going to go to Loyola, Maryland. 24 on the season. And ball is uh, behind net and going to be picked up by Candidate One. I can pretty much see the jerseys for Canada with good hustle off there by number six, Eliza Blazak, the all greater Rochester skier of the year. And Rachel B, Rachel Bennett, uh, younger sister of Sammy B, who plays at RIT with the men's lacrosse program there. And they get it down to Cole or Neiman, and they swing it over to Hannah Davis. Hannah Davis brings it up along the right-hand side, and she's going to face Dodge Zip and come back, and she's going to go back over to Liv Shore. Liv Shore is going to go down the slot. She's the to go, and she wants to run here and go, and knocks it down, and Kate Vega is going to draw first blood with 23 point 20, or 23 point 23 left to play. She had the best angle, but she let the right hander go, and she is going to knock down number 20 on the season. So live short. As I said, the reigning Dodge Ram Big Horn Matt at the Motors Athlete of the Week here for Canada. Well, she puts it in past Joyce and draws first blood as 23 1. Uh, what, 127 in? I'm not, I haven't always been the best at going backwards, so I'll just tell you, 23 33. Left to play. I see my dude Jack Harry in the house, and there's a face off. Heavy hair, very good at just reaching out, but she loses control, and it's going to be picked up by Penfield. So Penfield, with an opportunity to capitalize on a rare mistake made by Heavy hair. you do not see Heavy hair make many mistakes. She comes in, she cannot hope check away from Emerson Mathis. She has four goals on the season for the sophomore. Oh, oh, dude, I almost called it a puck. What am I thinking? I almost called it a puck. Dude, it's been how long since I <laughs> called a hockey game? But you know what? I have hockey on the brain because I mentioned it earlier and said there are parallels between the two games. But here's her bundle. Maya Herman brings it up the left-hand side. And as I said, uh, I may not have said, but when I say left and right, I mean if you're a player looking at the goal, not the goal looking out. Unless otherwise notified. So they get it right into the hands of the offensive catalyst named Hannah Davis. Hannah Davis, she always draws a lot of attention, passes it inside to Nola Weaver. Weaver is going to end up losing control and it ends up with a goalie choice. So Cannon Abel comes up empty handed on that possession. And let's see if Penfield can clear. And they are going to get past midfield, and they are going to get it down along the left-hand side. She's going to come all the way down inside the 12-meter, let it go. And a nice pass, and I do believe. Uh, and you see, man, Cross got a piece of that might have been in the, in, in the crease. Not sure. Now, a lot of people think the game, girls' game is too slow. It's just a little bit too fast for me to figure out what that call was. So. Andy Herod is going to get it to Hannah Davis, and Hannah Davis over here to Ranchy B. Bennett brings it right down Main Street. She is going to back into the defense and go over to uh, Liv Shore, and Liv Shore is going to settle down, give Abby Herod an opportunity to catch her breath. Herod, man, it's going to be fun to watch her doing draws in D1 at Boston College. I am, 
I am of the mind to think that she is going to immediately begin to produce for Boston the same way McKenna Davis was. Inside to Harris. Harris draws a quick triple team. She draws a lot of attention. Fine score. And this Shore is going to knock down number two on the day. Harris to Shore at 21 13. So, Lynn Shore knocks down number 21 on the season, number two for the day. And just very good, very good patient ball movement by Canada. They will allow Eric, once again, when she gets into that, once she gets into that eight meter and draws two or three defenders, that's going to leave somebody wide open and wide open was Liv Shore behind the defense and Herod did a beautiful job of finding her and that's number 12, that's number 12, uh, assist number 12 by Herod. Now it goes straight up in the air, it's on the carpet, still on the ground and Neiman tries to pick it up and, and it's going to end up with Penfield. So Penfield leading the draw two to one here but trailing two to nothing so that tells me one of a couple things. Okay, well the team is leading on draws, but behind on goals, that tells me one of a couple things, that the defense is doing their job in keeping the team that's leading in draws from scoring, or that goal is stepping up. And Penfield has not really got a good look at Maggie Cross just yet, so that Cameron Gable defense putting on a lot of pressure. They only allow 5.7 goals per game, which is one of the better defenses in Section 5, as is the boys game, which will be played at 7 o'clock. They get it down to the GLE. Penfield being patient. Inside, there it is. Oh, a nice job by Penfield. And once again, no idea. No, I think it was 24. I'm pretty sure that was 24. I'm pretty sure that was for Claris with her 25th of the season. Now, I'm going to go with 24 until I'm told otherwise. But I know it comes at 20, 25 to make it 2-1. So, Bagel is off the board. Game time, 549. 20-25 left to play. Would love to have a spotter up here for some instant replay. Anybody out there listening wants to come up here and, uh, you know, get behind the scenes, get out of the cold and run the binoculars and be a spotter for me. Come on up, man. You've got plenty of room. <clears throat> Jeremy on the camera wall, man. Here's a drop. That's going to go. Candidate was or even even Steven in the draws now two to two. Yeah, so for Claris with the assist to number 19, Jenna Caposi. Alright, so the assist is gonna go to Jenna Caposi. I had no idea who had the assist. And that's not because I can't tell what I'm doing. Jeremy, you can attest. You just can't see those jerseys. I can't see them. You simply them. cannot see them. And it, 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 it's it's a common problem. It's a problem that you know we announcers have. And, and I, I, I Kim Dewa with another turnover, and just like that, Joyce is going to try and hit the outlet, and it's going to go sail over her head. So the go out of bounds, and Kim Dewa is not a team that you want to give mistake opportunities to. They will make you pay, no doubt. So to walk it back, not whining, folks, I'm just trying to say, people designing jerseys, please consider your announcers, your stat keepers, the people who need to be able to identify who it is that made a goal. Just, they may look good sitting, you know, standing two feet away from them, but up here, you, you just can't tell. Here is Nina, she draws a, a lot of attention and she's gonna give a little stick check there and she is gonna get an opportunity, our first free position. So for everybody that doesn't know the game, when there's a foul inside the fan, or the, inside the eight meter, there's two, you see there's two different lines. One's eight meter, one's 12, they get what's called a free position. Oh, they get it to Hannah Davis, and Hannah Davis is gonna make you pay. They, they, uh, again, that defense, they, they throw the double on the ball, and that just leaves Hannah Davis wide open. When Hannah Davis is one-on-one, -on -one, she is gonna make you pay her 32nd on the season. Scoring for the Braves is number one, Hannah Davis. The assist goes to number five, Fuller Neiman. All right, so again, Hannah Davis, man, she will make you pay 
on that uh, on that one on one. She was just waiting on the GLE from the free position. That defender slid up and came up on Cole and Neiman. Cole and Neiman she didn't even take a step towards the goal. Took a step back, looked up, saw Hannah Davis. Oh, head open and hit Hannah. And then Hannah did a great job on the on the on the high fake. And then she went low. And uh, there was just nothing Joyce was going to do on that. So the draw control is going to go to Abby Herod. And then she's going to be fouled on the way by by Feclaris. And she will get a free position. No, she's going to get a restart. She's going to get a restart because she wasn't going towards the goal. See, if you're inside that eight meter and you get fouled, you're going to get a free position every time. No doubt. This, you know, especially if it's a major. On a minor, they might not, but... It, it depends. We'll see McKenna Davis in for Canada. And she'll slice and dice you, man. She will slice you up, no doubt. Here on the cup, Davis doesn't go to her. Instead, goes over to the left to uh, number three, which is Lola Shore. She lets it go, and it hits off the upright. Hits off the post. So the post gets its first save of the day. And uh, Joyce tries to up like a man. Goes to... Eliza Blazak, Blazak finds Herod, and Herod is going to settle in at the 8, tries to do it, she draws the contact, she'll get a free position, that's a major foul, you can't, you, you can't foul on the upper body, man, that's a major foul, and with 17.30 left to play, Abby Herod is going to get a free position and try to get her 18 on the season, she comes down, lets it go, Abby Herod, Gets her 18th of the season at 1726. And what I'm going to do for you in the next couple of days is I'll have an iPad to right here so you can see what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, right. And they will record exchange. I've been down there a couple times, saw my boy John Cooley down there, and he's got some pretty cool stuff. He doesn't have a whole lot of swag as far as gear and and, and you know things like that, but he has a lot, a lot of great music, a lot of great vintage stuff. He's also got a lot of new releases, alter, alter, alternative music, uh, stuff that's very popular as well. Not pop music, but uh, you know, just he's the dude to see. All right, when you go, please tell him that we sent you here on Chosen Spot Radio. Maybe here it reaches out, tries to get the draw. It's on the carpet, bouncing it off. Now a little bit of too much contact there as well. Liv Shore is going to kind of freight train over uh, Grace Run. She's got three goals, and they're going to award that two penalties. So three to three right now on the ground control possessions in the game ball. So Penfield keeping it close there. And I think that, I think right here they have got to settle in and uh, see here. Where's the ball going to go? Mm -hmm. so, and then that is some trying to pick this one. And the official's going to blow the whistle. She's going to set the right down the numbers at the 20 yard line. It's 16.35 left to play here in first. Canada leading 4 1. Don't ever go by a team record as to how you think the game is going to shake out. Because it just does not, it, it doesn't work out that way, man. You, you know, that, that's why we play the game. Anything can happen on any given day. 16, 16 left to play. Penfield, they have to have a long possession here. They have to get a good look. Oh, and they're going to turn the ball over. They turn it over. So I, I want to say that might have been the announcer's jinx, but that was just just not well played. That's all. So Harry, ahead to McKenna Davis, and McKenna Davis is off to the races. Not only is she tall, not only is she strong, she quick too. She is quick. I mean, there's quicker, but she's quick. You know, you look at her, you know, you might think, eh, hey, she's not very fleet of foot, but she, she can, uh, she can certainly outrun me and Jeremy. I know that. <laughs> Hannah Davis, she goes in one handed, lets it go, goes wide right. Now that's one of those shots that you, you rarely see. Hannah Davis not well, not one on three. But that went wide right, right, strike one went wide right. And here comes the player. She brings it across the country. She's going to go all the way down the slot, stop at the 25, and give it up over here to the Hound. And Emerson Mathis, four goals on the season. 
I am a firm supporter of wearing helmets. I know the, you've heard me talk about it, and I know the girls, some girls don't want to wear them. You need to move in and out. Uh, some do. Play. It's I'm okay with it. 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 I'm okay with and then maybe zoom in a little bit when they're sort of going to watch it sometimes. Like when they celebrate them. And then Bristol the Sprint cars are at Bristol Speedway. And uh, man, a lot of racing going on. I don't know how many of you are race fans, but I feel inside the eight, here's the left hand on this floor. So the left hand is good for Penfield. And now Thomas is fairly certain that that was number 14 in was Grace One that's going to knock down her fourth of the season. I know it comes at 14 42 and makes it 4 to 2. So although Canandaigua is doubled up, it's 4 to 2, and that's a different landscape, a different look than 4 to 1. I'll tell you that right now. We're going to be back at the draw, and it's been Abby Harris and uh, Alina Petrie going at it. And uh, Petrie's been, you know, she's, she's, uh, she's not afraid. She's not afraid. She's not backing down. As I said, I believe I'm waiting for official determination, but I believe that was Grace One. And again, we're, we're waiting so long because we have to figure out who it is because these jerseys just, we can't read them. Nobody can. It's crazy. It's cray cray. Here's the draw. And it's once again going to be picked up by Penfield. So Penfield, on this position, can make it a one goal game of 14.30 left to play here in the first. Weather can always be a great equalizer as well. That wind is coming hard out of the west. It's about uh, 49 degrees. And that breeze, it's got to I mean, real feel, quote unquote, has got to be close to 40, if not if not more than that. But Penfield has to settle in here. What do we got? Free position coming? 14 left to play here. In the first. The boys lacrosse team all lined up against the rail supporting the ladies, and I love to see it. Looks like we're going to have a free position. It's over on the left hand side. Free position for Penfield. And uh, let's see, is Ronnie Davis uh, getting in trouble? I wonder if Ronnie Davis is getting in trouble, if or, or I know he's asking for an explanation, but to me it looks more like he's explaining it to the official. Looks more like Ronnie's explaining it to the official than the official is. Oh wait a second, they're calling over. They're calling over the uh, head coach. They're calling over Coach York, and they're calling uh, and Coach Davis. They're both going to have a meeting of the minds here, right around the 30-yard line. On the sideline, I'm going to take an opportunity to step aside, raise a little bit of revenue. Hey, Canandaigua versus Penfield, four to two. Canandaigua leads. Girls lacrosse on Charles's Spot Radio. <laughs> Somebody buy and bring me one of those Henrietta hot plates. I'll take whatever you bring up here. Whatever you bring, feed me. So what do you think so far, man? I'll tell you what, this is a better game than it should be. It is. I mean, I'm mostly just trying to figure out what I'm looking at. It's a good game. Well, the, 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 it, it is obviously the mission is to put it in the goal. Yeah. The it's hardest just, part is the rules. Yeah, the rules, you know, the yeah. intricacies to this. Yeah. I have so many What's going on here? Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Welcome back in, fans. Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Davis seems to be uh, somewhat satisfied, at least enough to let the referee go back to back to work. And Coach York returns back to his bench area. We've got a free position off to the left hand side with 1345 for Claris is going to uh, try to knock down her second on the day. And she comes down and a little bit of contact between her and Cross. And Four to two for Claris once again. Different hash mark comes down. Watch us all. And Maggie Cook with a fantastic low save. Great stick save by 
Maggie Cross on that attempt by Fraclaris and Herod over to Hermano. Maya Herman brings it up to the left hand side. Now she angles over towards the slot right down the center and pulls up as she draws the double. Here's the slide. Now draws the triple. Runs into a lot of contact. Gets it off to Abby Herod. But as she does, the official on the near side right about the 40 yard line is going to call the contact. Good job by Maya to, you know, draw that much attention. So Penfield obviously doubling and, and tripling on the ball. The only problem is that's leaving somebody open. And this candidate team is adept at finding the open player. 12 30 left to play. Candidate with the ball on the GLE. They give it to the X behind the goal to Hannah Davis. She brings it up with the left hand. Passes into Herod. Herod lets it go. A great, great stick save. Stone cold there by the left hander Joyce. Great stick save by uh, Joyce, Molly Joyce. Molly Joyce, the senior. And now the senior ball of Vanderbilt, they're 96. Here they are in transition. Penfield for Claris runs into the fan. So you see the semicircle going around the outside, Jeremy? That's what we call the fan. That's a 12 meter. The other one that you see angled off, that's the 8 meter. So it, 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 it's all just about, you know, fouls and. Man, somebody got wrecked. Penfield got wrecked. Coming up along the left-hand side, down on the turf. Uh, one of the helmeted players didn't help her in that situation. She's grabbing the bread basket, so she might have got the wind knocked out of her. Jeremy Herman, the excellent uh, trainer here at Canandaigua, making his way out to make sure that the young lady is okay. Now, Jeremy's standing in the way. I cannot, still have not seen. All right, it's number nine. So I know that that is uh, Peyton Rothfuss, the eighth grader. The eighth grader, Peyton Rothfuss, one and one for two. She is going to come off. So she is coming off under her own power. She is jogging off of the field. Gets a little bit of love from her teammate, Grace Run, <laughs> who has one. Oh, look at this. Check this out, man. She is happy to be getting in. Siobhan. Anna, the junior, she is in. She's going to be in quick. You can tell she is totally ready to get in there and play. So, unfortunately, the reason she's in to play, you know, she isn't cool with, but uh, she's happy to be in there. She's going to come back on defense, and they're going to bump. Who did they bump down? They bumped uh, number 14, Grace Rundown, and she is going to take the free position because uh, she, did, she did get ready. <laughs> She didn't get red, so uh, who was that? Number nine, Pete Moffitt. So a free position for Penfield. I'll tell you what, on this free position, they can make this a one-goal game. Make this a one-goal game. Nope, let me see. Nope, we're, bringing, uh, we're bringing Siobhan Hannah. She is going to go down because she is the player that came in. She's got to be the one to take that free position. Can't switch up the girl that came in. And substitution for Rothfuss has to take the free position. And great defense by Canada Angle on that hash mark. The first one up, that's not a good hash mark to get a, a, a good goal or a good look on goal from. So now they can make the switch. Now they can drop run down. Now they can, uh, you know, do their thing there. But you want to have backed up on defense. Hard pass inside, a lot of contact. Good job by the official to let him play, and that's not just because that benefits Canada. Well, that's because that benefits good play. I like good hard play, and uh, you know, let him play. As long as I've always said, call it both ways, man. Call it both ways. Let them play as hard as you want to let them play. Just remember, though, they're kids, and they'll do they'll get away with whatever you let them get away with. So here is uh, McKenna, McKenna Cross along the left hand side. And she is going to get too much contact there from Emerson Mathis, the sophomore, our first of two. And a doubleheader here. The boys host Brighton, who are looking for their first win of the season. Their program is a little bit on the downside, but they're battling. And I, 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 you cannot take any team on any given day lightly. No doubt about that. Here's Hannah Davis. She's going to swing it over to Abby Herod back at the slot at the 20. Over to Liv Shore. Two goals, two of Canada Eagles' four goals on the day thus far. Hannah Davis, she's got one as well as Herod. 
Here's Rachel B. Rachel Bennett inside the eight meter, backs out after drawing the double. Heron with a quick pass over to Hannah Davis. Did a great job on the defense, and the foul is going to go against. See now, you see how they put one of the girls behind the girl who gets a free position? That's the one who committed the foul. Mm, okay, so Hannah Davis gets a free position, comes down, great defense, and she's just going to shoot the overhand over the double team, knocks it down to 938. Left the play to make it Hannah Davis 5, Penfield 2. Scoring the 8 meter goal, number 1, Hannah Davis. Oh, 
move from the free position. So Mac is sweating. So it's going to come at 6 to 38. Three minutes exactly. Since West Ball came in. So, yeah. Number four, Sydney, Marcus. <laughs> All right, I didn't, uh, who did, did, yeah, Marcus, okay. All right, I, I got that all right. Yeah, baby, 636, always do your best, do your best for this draw. He's going to go to Cannon Angle, so they take the lead, five to four in the draw category. It's going to be picked up by Kohler Neiman. Kohler Neiman going to Siena, they're 10 and seven, she's got Six goals and two apples for eight total points. Six twenty left to play. Hannah Davis comes in, and that was uh, that was an email there. I got to make sure I put that down. There you go. Six thirty-eight. Bang. Here we go. <laughs> Excuse me. Rachel Bennett over to Hannah Davis. Right hand side. Man, she is ruthless. She's fearless, man. All of these kids. Everybody on the field is. I give them a lot of credit too. It's cold out there, man. Cold. So. It makes me think of Megan Hoffman when it was the, like blizzard conditions at Waterloo for a sectionals game, man. And, 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 and Megan Hoffman was out there, no sleeves, no leggings, nothing. I almost gave her player of the game just for simply being out there. She was the only one out there with no sleeves, no leggings. It was crazy. Then she told me she got in trouble. Her mother made her wear leggings and under armor the next game. Emmy Harry comes in the middle, that's the right hand to go. It's loose out in front of Joyce. And Joyce is going to pick it up. And once that ball is in the crease, you're not, you're not able to reach in and get it. You're not able to reach in and try to get it. Now, the clear continues to be a difficult uh, difficulty for Canada. Where Davis picks it up, gets it into Shore. Shore lets it go and knocks it down. So I believe. I gotta make sure. I gotta make sure and see who that was. But I know it comes at five or seven to make it six to three. I want to make sure. I want to make sure who that was. So Penfield unable to string together. Scoring to Braves, number eight, Liv Shore. Yeah, Liv Shore with the heady. So Liv Shore gets the heady. Bada bing, bada boom. Liv Shore with 507 off the go and gets the hat trick. And Kennedy they will now lead six to three. But I give Penfield a lot of credit. Like I said, a lot of credit. They're hanging and banging. Uh, they're hanging and banging here to draw control. And they're keeping it manageable. Six to three is manageable. It is manageable. If they were able to capitalize on a few of those draw controls that they've been able to get, i tell you, this would be a completely different game. Eric goes down on her body after the draw. And uh, Liv Shore is going to come in and possess that. And now Canandaigua with two straight draw controls now in six to four. So 455, I'm telling you, that just bad boy goes straight up, man. And if there's any little flying birds, any pigeons flying around watching the game, they can get knocked out. So here at the top, Bennett, 440 left to play here in the first. Kraus gets it over to Neiman. Neiman all the way up top to Bennett. Bennett to Hannah Davis on the right-hand side. Here's McKenna Kraus in the slot. Left alley. Heron. And some uh, kind of field latchers are in the house here to support the ladies. Over to Hannah Davis, right in the slot. She draws the quick double, draws the quick slide. Here's McKenna Krause. McKenna Krause has a goal on the season. And it you know, just a goal. One over one. Hannah Davis back over here over to Harrod. Here's Shore. Over to Cross, the 10 yard line along the numbers. Right hand carry into the slot. Switches with Davis. Screens out the defender so she can make the flip to Davis. Nice job there. Good recognition of what she has to do to keep that defender away from the ball. Lola Shore, the eighth grader, gets it off the right GB. Here's Canada David looking like they're trying to. Burn some time off of the clock down to 320. Lola Shore or Lift Shore brings it down. A little bit of contact. 
And the official, I believe, I don't believe he made the call. I think he was just signaling that she tripped on, the, on her own two feet. As uh, the Brighton Barons are in the house, offload. Brighton Barons going to be playing the fellas that know she is going to get the free position. So he's calling the trick. I thought he was saying that she, uh, you know, lost her own two feet. But sure, with the head, he goes far three. 250 left to play. Doesn't go towards goal. Backs out and gives it to Abby Harris in the slot. Bennett over to Kraus. Left alley along the hash mark. Back up top. No, oh, it's not that good. So a takeaway by the Patriots. Claris off to the races along the left-hand side. Unfortunately for her, she's got to go up against McKenna Krause. McKenna Krause plays uh, defense, one of the better defenders on the Canandaigua Braves hockey team. Another fearless player for Canandaigua, 215 left to play. Claris over on the left-hand side to the helmeted Mathis. Mathis gets away from Herman. Herman runs her down though, gives her a little poke chat. And the official is going to give Mathis a free restart. See, there you go again, Jeremy. See how, see how they put the offender, the one who made the foul, behind the, per the, the player that the foul was, uh, was on. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. 145. That field comes down and the shot is good. And that is going to be Sidney Mathis. So Mathis for Penfield is going to get her first of the day and her tenth of the season. So she's in double digits at 146. So 146 left to go, and I'm telling you, man, we have a two-goal game. This is a Penfield is hanging and banging. This is a this is a lot closer. This is a lot closer game than I bet you anybody would think it was going to be coming in. No doubt about it. 146 left to play. And as always, it's good to see Nemo in the house. He's up here in the press box, hanging out. Always good to see him, you know, up here walking around, taking it nice and easy, taking it slow. And with their first straight drop and draw, is now up 7 to 4. And that Kevin Nemo. Nemo brings it down, speaking of Nemo, brings it down the left-hand sideline. Love calling games on a football field. Not by use facility. Everything but track, pretty much. Kennedy with three time, three straight, back to back to back. Sectionals champions in football. Looking forward to that. If you want to sponsor, man, it's always one of our most popular seasons. Rachel Bennett, Canada will hold on to that 6-4 lead. Final minute to play. Inside to Nola Weaver. Weaver can't get the shot off. She hands it off to Davis. Davis splits the two defenders, passes it to Weaver. Weaver gets checked from behind and it's going to be picked up by Penfield. And Penfield off to the races in transition over on the left-hand side. And I'm not sure who she was trying to pass that to, but it ends up going right to Abby Harrod. 35 seconds left to play here. No idea, no idea who she was going to, dude. I don't know if it, 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 it misplayed out of her stick, but whatever happened, Weaver comes up. It gets it inside. What a great save by Joyce. What a great save by Joyce on Lola Shore. I mean, Shore was maybe two feet. She was hanging out on the island, no doubt about it. That was a fantastic save by Joyce. Now they get it ahead to Fuclaris. Fuclaris gets it in. Very nice finish. 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 I believe it was number 12. Danielle Emler with her seventh. So Penfield, for the first time today, is able to get their second straight. They've scored three of the last four goals that have been scored, and that comes with 0.58 left to play. Then we're going to Youngstown from Feclaris. Oh, wow. Emma, Emma, 
runner on the assist. We got a one goal game, people. One goal game, and we've got timeout. Let me set the table for you. Two point five left to play. No, nope, they're gonna let time run out. Time expires here on the first half. Time expires on the first half. So with the end of the first half, Enfield is in the state. Cannon Day will leading six to five. We've got a one goal game, and we're only gonna we're gonna have a short, brief halftime quick. One thing is because it's so windy and cold and we kind of got way behind. So here Canadawa is going to continue their prowess at the uh, draw control as we switch ends. Canadawa now defending the northern goal and Penfield now defending the southern goal. Nice job bringing it across by Caroline Lido, the sophomore. So once again, if anybody's listening, man, send me up a hot dog plate. I'll, play, I'll pay for it after the game. Or, uh, I'm, I'm hungry, man. I want to strap the feedback on and get me one of those honey out of hots, uh, honey out of hots plates. And here's Hannah Davis. She takes a left hander, but it's backed up nicely by Canadawa. Picked up by Cole or Neiman, so they retain possession. That's another one of those rare misses by Hannah Davis. She tries to throw it inside and to the cutting, uh, Liv Shore. Liv Shore can't handle it. It's loose on the carpet. There's a huge scrum going after. Everybody is going after it. It's going to come up with Penfield. So I, in, in my walkabout there at, at halftime, hey, it's none of your business where I was going or what I was doing. Put two and two together and you can come up with four. I did run into that official who was talking with Ronnie Davis and I asked him what the deal was and he just said whenever well, one official wants an explanation, it's in the rules that both both coaches have to get together with the official. Nice job by Penfield to get it inside of the eight meter, but unable to get a good look at Maggie Cross in goal. Maggie Cross is not uh, faced a whole lot of shots today, but I'll tell you what, man, this Penfield team is bringing it here to Camp Eagle, and with this possession, they can actually tie the game, trailing six to five. It's, it's ironic because Canada Eagle has uh, finally, oh, here's a, a shot, a great save by Maggie Cross, a fantastic save there by Maggie Cross to keep the one goal lead. But as I was mentioning and alluding to earlier, when Penfield was winning the draw battle, they were losing, they were trailing. And now Canada Eagle is winning the draw battle and they have given what have they given up three of the last four goals, four of the last six that have been scored? So Penfield for the first time, closing down the scoring in the first half, able to string together two consecutive goals. 22-22 left to play here in the final frame. Six to five. Man, I'll tell you what. Nice pass inside to Shore. Hannah Davis to Liv Shore is good. Liv Shore with her fourth on the day. Range number eight, Liv Shore. The assist goes to number one, Hannah Davis. All right, want to also welcome in Family Hair in Canada at 306 Eastern Boulevard, 585-412-6134. Get yourself a nice cut from Family Hair, you know what I'm saying? We are back at it, Canada off that fourth goal by Liv Shaw from that field by Hannah Davis back at the draw, and it's still losing the cuts finally come up with Abby Herod. So Canada has won, what, four or five straight now? At least four, if not five straight. And they get it inside down to Cole and Neiman, and she draws the triple team over on the far side. It's going to walk it down the sideline after retaining possession. So a great job by the junior Cole and Neiman. Going to go to Siena. She uh, gets it over here to Hannah Davis. And Davis is a sharp shooter. Not only is she a sharp shooter, she's a 10 point passer. And two that's a new one. Try saying that 12 times fast. 10 point passer. And Davis splits the defense and ends up losing the ball. 
So it is on the carpet that's going to be picked up by Penfield. That is another way that we, that we, we don't see a whole lot. But she is frustrated. She's mad at herself for losing possession of the ball. She did a great job of splitting the, the, de the defense. But in case you're just joining us and you've never heard me call a game, hey, I got a, a, a little nerve disease and brain disease. Sometimes I stutter and stammer, but hey, I'm out here doing it. And the Penfield Patriots unable to clear the ball. It's still on the carpet, and it is finally going to come up with Katie Ballmer. She, her and her sister, uh, they're twins, and they're both going to go to Akron. They're going to go to Akron, and Akron could use some help. They're 2 and 14 on the season here in 2022. Again, this is a front end as they get it to for Claris. And she is the offensive catalyst here for Penfield. But uh, I'll tell you what, they're eating, they're eating those up, those plates, those Henrietta Hunts plates over there in the next section over there where the clock is and the announcers and stuff. And oh my God, the smell is wafting over here and it smells so good. Hot dog plate, hot dog plate. Pretty please. That's how hard I've done back in 2010. <laughs> Excuse me, just as I say that, it appears that the wind, <laughs> Excuse me, has picked back up. For Claris, left alley for Penfield, looking to close that goal gap back up to one. They had it to within one goal at the end of the first half. And, and, and I'll tell you, if, if, if anything, they can take a moral victory away from being just one goal away from tying it up at the end of the first against this Cannonable offense that scores just shy of 14 goals per game. So up top with Mathis, and we've got a whistle from the official, official whistle. And the restart's going to be with Sidney Nackis. Nackis with one of the four goals, five goals, for Penfield. Penfield scores an average of 7.1 on the season. Out the fourth, here's another one. Maybe one more. We're back to a one goal game. Wait to see the number. They're all camped out right in the middle. I know it comes at 19.02. <laughs> and they're all just standing there so I can't see the number. It's for Claris. So for Claris with her second, I believe. Going to goal. Alisa for Claris. Claris will get the number two. That's her first on the day. I didn't get who the assist was from. I did not get who the assist was from. Just a note. Seventy-six, one goal game with nineteen oh two left to play again. Penfield scoring three of the last four goals scored. Four of the last six. Man, if we got a game going. Call your family, call your friends, call people you don't even like. Time to get on ChosenSpotRadio.com. We have a great one going for you. Here's the draw. And Andy here just reaches up, pulls it down. Canada has to start taking the game. Oh, they get it inside and a nice stick check there. Here it ends up on the ground and a takeaway by Penfield. Penfield brought it. Penfield was bringing it here today. They're not afraid to get off the bus against this Canada team. That is for sure. Seven to six. But they're going to turn the ball over on the far side and we'll go back to Canada. So Hermano, Maya Herman, is going to get it over here to Lyle. Lyle doesn't play it clean, but nobody around her, so she can pick it up and get it ahead of Krause and make clear across midfield. Krause is going to bring it down the right hand side. Yeah, good luck. Good luck trying to outbody her. There's no way you're going to put a body on the Kevin Krause and get away with it. 18 left, 18 10 left to play. Can Canada open it back up to a two goal buffer? I say buffer because if you watch the movie Godfather, you know what, it, what the joke is. Here's a shot by Rachel Bennett, and it's a great save here by Joyce. Boy, I'll tell you, Grace Joyce is having a, Molly Joyce, I should say. Molly Joyce is having a great game for Penfield. I know she's giving up seven, but it could be a heck of a lot worse. So Canada with does retain possession. Nice save from behind there by Neiman. They're going to swing it over here to Davis on the near side. She's going to walk it up to the GLE, and that is not 
again, that's not something you see a whole lot from Hannah Davis because she's got one speed, and it isn't slow. It's all out. She's going to back up, give herself a little bit of space, give herself some space to work with. You can pull the bopping up and down. She's going to back up. Now comes up. Spin dot. Great defense on Hannah Davis. Great defense inside that 18 to keep her from being, being able to pinpoint past anybody. She comes up, face dodge, puts her right hand down. I think Joyce got a piece of that, and it's going to come down to Penfield. So Penfield left to the base is up to the inside, and Jennifer throws it. She has an assist for the freshman. Gets it ahead to the player, but I should say that is Katie Ballmer, the Akron commit, 16-40 left to play. I'll tell you what, Penfield is pumped because on this possession, they can once again tie this game. So they get it over here into the left alley over to Nackis. Nackis trying to feed it into the middle. Get it, gets it inside the Mathis, and Mathis is going to go in, and we've got a 7-7 seven seven tie game with 16-21 left to play. And once again, Penfield able to get two straight. <laughs> to seven with 16-21 left to play, nodded up at sevens. And, it, man, I'm just telling you, it, 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 Cannon Day was playing a good game, it's just Penfield is playing as well. They're playing just as good, they are playing aggressively on the ball, they're going after every 50-50. They want to be the ones to knock that bagel off in the loss column that Cannon Day has been able to, to enjoy through seven games. 7-7 seven to seven with 16-21 left to play here in the second half. Hits up, hits on the carpet. Here it is going to come up with, nope, she doesn't come up with a clean. And, it, yep, it is going to go. They're going to award it to Cannondagua. So Cannondagua, the Patriots have not been able to get a draw since their fourth in the first half. 16 minutes left to play, but Cannondagua is... Uh, they're on a little bit of a, well, somewhat of a dry spell. They scored one to start the second half here with 22-11 to play, but before that, they haven't scored since 5 0 7 left to play. Rachel Bennett coming right hand side, lets it. No, nope, out she let it go. She gets it over here to uh, the left side to Lola Shore. Lola Shore out in front is going to uh, get it to Bennett. She lets the right hander go. And the ball goes wide right. Bennett wanted the contact foul. She wanted a free position and isn't going to get it. So the ball does stay with Canada because they were closest to it when it went out of bounds after the shot. 15-15 left to play, 7-7. Seven seven. Right hander by Shore. And Lola Shore goes into business for herself, knocks it down, and Canada really takes the lead with the 15-10. Left to play, and I believe that's number five. Number five by Liv Shore. Rachel Bennett down the slot. She likes that right-handed runner. She instead goes behind to Lola Shore. Lola Shore brings it up left-handed, passes it up to the top to Abby Herod. Abby Herod brings it down the right hand and beats Joyce over the left shoulder. So Abby Herod knocks one down on her second on the day. Cannon Day Blow. The second and second goal for the first time since 1848 and 1726 left to play in the first. <laughs> All right, 
have one thing, Todd Kelman, Cannon Gable Athletics Hall of Famer. Hey, Five IQ for their continued support every season, year after year. Abby Herrick with her second on the day and her 18th, 19th of the season. Here is a draw, and this one is going to be picked up by Penfield. So their first draw win since, what, early, about halfway through the first half, 14.20 left to go. Game time is 6.43, so we're a little behind. We're a little behind. The boys' game will have a little bit of a late start, but the boys taking on Brighton, looking for their first win of the season. That game will be following shortly after the girls' game right here live on the station for Braves Nation, the Hunter High School Sports Chosen Spot Radio. 14 left to play. Cameron Dagle up 9-7 to seven now. Able to score the last two after holding Penfield to uh, two straight. Penfield twice. They've been able to string consecutive back-to-back -back goals. Cam Dagle has done his self one two uh, three times now. Penfield on the shot. And Cam Dagle backs it up. Here's Carol Wild on the clear cross. A little bit of contact between her and Paris. No ball. And the Patriots are going to come up with it. Patriots trying to get it in the slot. Liv Shore's going to knock it down. Charles comes in and tries to scoop it up. Big old scrum happening right there. Right to that. Rachie Bing is going to come up with it. And she gets it ahead. And they get it down to Hannah Davis. Nola Weaver gets it down to Hannah Davis. Hannah Davis, oh man, she almost had a clear shot to the goal. But good defensive slide there by... Penfield, 13 left to play. Well, 50 left to play here. Canada will up 9 to 7. Like I said, the Brighton boys are in the house. Dude, you're going on your hand already? Dude, if you're thinking it's too cold before you even start playing, I can just imagine where your mind's going to be at while you're playing. Come on, man, shake that off. If, you're, if it's too cold, you're not thinking hard enough about the game. You heard, it. you heard me say it. I said it and I stand behind it, dude. So anyway, here's Hannah Davis. Working the GLE on the right-hand side. She bumps it up to Rachel Bennett on the high side. She comes down the slot. A lot of contact and she is going to get a... I don't know if she's going to get a free position or not, but Rachel Bennett will get the ball back. And she is. Rachel Bennett's going to get a free position right on the center hash. Right on the slot. The slot, folks, is just the center of the field. She is going to get a free look right there at, she's going to get a free look at Molly Joy. She comes down, lets it go, and oh, she puts down the bouncer. What a great save from behind by Nola Weaver. Weaver back up front to Rachel Bennett. Now Bennett on that free position, she let the bouncer go, but the ball bounced way too in front of her, and it went way high, but Nola Weaver was right there. Stretch it out, Jeremy, man, I'm telling you. Stretch it out, bro. So Rachel Bennett. Man, what a great job by Nola Weaver to pull down that shot, keep it from going out of bounds. And she got it back up top to Rachel Bennett. Now Rachel Bennett is going to move over one hash mark, and we'll see if she gets a look, and I guarantee you she wants that one back. She goes down. Redemption! As Rachel Bennett is going to knock it down and get her third on the season and her first of the night in Canada was third straight. Rachel Bennett from the free position. I believe that's Cannon Dable's one and two third goal from free position. And with 11.22 left to play, Cannon Dable scored the last three goals. And they've been able to retake a 10 to 7 lead. We've got a time on stoppage in play with 11.22 left to play. One more time, I want to welcome family here to the family of marketing partners. And I'll tell you what. When you are on board, I don't just take your money and forget all about you. I want you to do well, because the better you do, the better I do. And the better I do, the better you do. We're partners. And what I want you to do, folks, is when you use one of our sponsor services, when you buy their products, when you go to their websites, their Facebooks, their social medias, I need you to let them know that you heard their 
and they're mentioned here on Chosen Spot Radio. I need you to know, or I need you to let them know that you appreciate them supporting what we do, support those who support us, because then they'll say to themselves, hey, wait a minute, that's money well spent. Maybe I'll continue to support Chosen Spot Radio, because that's, that's the only way we're able to do this. The more support we get, the more gains we can cover. So let me set the table for you. 11 22 left to play here in the final three. Again, the day we're now getting 10 to 7, game time at 6 48. And there's that same kid, dude. Look at him, Jeremy, blowing on both of his hands. I gotta get his number because I'm gonna watch how he plays. I'm gonna watch how that dude plays all game, man. He is blowing on his hands. He is super duper cold. I got you, man. I got you. I will not forget. Oh, 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 Fun to watch it. And one more time, a big shout out to all these girls, all these ladies, all these coaches, all the fans that are outside in these, uh, I don't want to call it inclement, but definitely a little bit cold, definitely a little bit windy. Draws here to go to Penfield. So they've been able to win a couple straight here. After, uh, <coughs> excuse me, after losing a whole bunch, they won four. Early on, and then they, they went a uh, nice little gap there. And then they came up empty handed, and they're going to turn it over on the far side, and they're going to get it to Hermano. Maya Herman, she brings it across. All Greater Rochester, first team in basketball, gets it ahead of Noah Weaver. Noah Weaver brings it down the left alley. Right along the numbers, and it's going to settle. Candidate will end with that three goal lead. Now it'll be interesting to see if Coach Davis is going to go right at net. Or if he is going to, uh, you know, chill out and uh, try to kind of ride the laurel tree, try and rest on the laurels just a little bit. I don't see that happening, especially with this kid right here, Hannah Davis. She, nice face dodge, and then lets it go and hits the sidewinder and makes it 11 to 7. With 10 20 left to play here in the second half. Scoring the Ray. Number one, Hannah Davis. <laughs> so Hannah Davis, Hannah Davis, Hannah Davis with the heady. So Hannah gets the heady. She's now got 34 on the season and 1020 left to play. Hannah Davis retakes a. a, a, a he has a four goal lead, 11 to seven. And as I, as, as I was alluding to earlier, fans, I stutter and stammer a little bit, and I kind of lose train of thought and stuff. It's really not my fault, man. But you know what, instead of busting my chops about it, how about saying these kids, man, we appreciate you bad one too, whatever you're going through to be out there. So that draw, great job to win that draw by Penfield. Man, that was, uh, that was all hard work we got them that draw. So they get it down here. First time I've called up Kennedy Cohn, the senior. <clears throat> Over here on the left side, gets it back up to Mathis. Mathis looking to get involved. There she's at five on the game. Oh, 9.40 left to play. Kennedy up 11 to seven. The front end of two, a double header. Brought to you by Matt at the Motors. M A T T at the Motors. So Liz Shore, right there, obviously, atop the watch list for Henrietta Hots, Pittsburgh Hots player of the game. And then the Matt at the Motors Jeep Gladiator. We've got a couple candidates. Rachel Bennett, she's in there. You got to put her in there. Abby Harris. All players that have won accolades before have to look at some uh, defensive efforts by Ken Dewa. Let's see here, ball on the restart. On the GLE over on the right hand side. 
put a wheeler over here to the near side along with GLE, which is a goal line extended. A nice defensive play there by Maya, Maya Herman. Hermano, but they're going to call the stick check foul against her. 8.30 left to play. Not sure it looked clean to me. Look clean to me. But I'm also not an official. I'm not down on the field. Tis what tis. You got to do what you got to do. Nice job there by Eliza Blazak on the defensive effort. Now they try to pass it out front. Herod tries to reach up, knock it down. Nice job by Eddie Herod for the takeaway. She's going to get it to McKenna Krause on the outback. And McKenna Krause is going to bring it across. Krause ahead to Davis. Davis is going to bring it down to right alley. She's going to go one on one. She's going to let it go off the left upright. Off the upright, the bouncer is going to be picked up off the rebound by Penfield. Oh, and a nice stick by Abby Harris, but look, head contact, so that'll be a restart. Uh, let's see if the official, no, the official does not reach in the pocket. Anytime you see him going in the pocket, anytime you see an official going towards the pocket, you have to... Wait and see if a yellow card is going to come out. Sue Ellis, former head coach here at Cannon Daniel, stalking the sidelines from Ronnie Davis. Ronnie going to come over and uh, I thought he was barking at somebody to come in, but Penfield brings it across on the right sideline over on the far side. It was Caroline Lyle. She's had a great game on defense. <clears throat> I'm going to have to put her on the watch list. For the Gladiator, for the Jeep Gladiator, 6.45 left to play here in the girls game unless it's a goal or a major foul. That clock keeps on running. Canada will trying to improve the 8 No. Penfield trying to improve to 3 and 6. 6.30 left to play. I miss 6.36. Always do your best to be your best. Another great move against Canada. The boys. Shortly after this game, hopefully I can go down and order myself a nice hot dog plate. I should probably just stay away from it. Stay away from it. McKenna Krause ends up on the, the turf on defense. <laughs> I'll, ne I'll never figure out how the defender ends up on the ground and they call a foul against the defender. <laughs> Six minutes left to play. Nice pass over here to the right hand side. Here's the shot that goes off the upright on the far side. Man, that was a nice shot by Kennedy Cole trying to get her second on the season. Here comes Canadigla in transition. Let's see if they go to goal or if they try and burn some time off of that clock with 540 left to play. They get it down to Cole or Neiman and she is just going to, is that Cole? Let me make sure. Let me make sure that's Cole or Neiman. I believe it is. Get it over here to Hannah Davis. And it looks like Canada was going to settle in and maybe try to burn some time off of that clock. Nice hustle on behalf of Sydney Nackis, man. She's one of those players playing without sleeves as well. Man, a lot tougher than I am. But I'm walking around in shorts and a short sleeve shirt, and everybody's like, aren't you cold? Nope, I love the cold weather. Here's Abby Harris. That's the right hand. Go to the end, is my question. Nice save there by Molly Joyce in the outlet. And here comes Penfield in transition right up the slot. Right down the main street, right down the center. Now she's going to angle over to the right and go over to the numbers on the far side. 4.40 left to play in the final frame. Can Canada will improve to 8 0? No. Can Penfield make a comeback here in the final four and a half minutes? Somebody from Penfield just got wrecked and is going to get a free position on the left hand side. Waiting on the number, and it is Peyton Rothfuss, the eighth grader. She'll get the free position over here on the left hand side. And she's going to be on the hanging hatch, the hanging chair, right at the five yard line. I don't think she'll get a look. Abby Harrod standing in the middle of the. Abby Harrod standing in the middle of the eight. Uh oh, good job. Did she get yellow? I wonder if I think Abby might have gotten yellow. Somebody. Ah, it looks like the official has the yellow. Wow. It's a green card. I 
All right, so with 4.08 left to play in the free position for about Peyton Rothfuss. Boy, I'm telling you, man, it's just the game is, has slowed down a little bit, almost to a crawl. It's palpable. It, it just seems to be cold. It seems to be cold. When the game is going faster, you're thinking less about it. When the game is slowed down, you, you, you start to notice how much the wind is blowing. You notice how much that flag is blowing. Here she brings it in. It goes by right. It goes by right. I think Eddie Harry might have got a piece of that stick and deflected that ball or guided that ball off to the left hand side. So, but a bang, bang, boom. 3.55 left to play. Hermano, Maya Herman brings it up. She's going to run a long little 20 yard line. Looking, Caroline Light will open on this side, but they're going to flip it to Eddie Harris and Eddie Harris. And it's going to go over to Nola Weaver over on the far side. So Nola Weaver is going to run it up the side. I believe she has been held scoreless here thus far today. I could be, I could be wrong. 3.32 left to play, and it looks like we have a stoppage in play. So stoppage in play with 3.32 left to play. Game time, 6.59. Like I said, we're going to have a little bit of a late start for the boys' game. So hang out. Uh, keep an eye out at ChosenSpotRadio.com for when you get the going live notification. You're listening to Girls High School Across here on the home for high school sports, Chosen Spot Radio. Now leading 12 to 7. 12 to 7. So we had a completely different ball game here at the half. It scored was 6 to 5. Canandaigua, <clears throat> Canandaigua has been able to outscore Penfield 2 to 4, 6 to 2 here in the second half. And we're back at the drawing pole. And even flips it up in the air. It comes back to the Offensive end is going to be brought down by Penfield. So Powell on the top now is picked up by Cam Davis, Rachel Bennett. So Rachel Bennett with a good game thus far. <clears throat> Excuse me, picked up some ground balls, knocked down the goal, gets it ahead to Nola Weaver, and she's going to bring it down the left end with the left hand. <laughs> going to put the brakes on, do the dodge, go to goal. Pass it to him, Davis out in front. And going to be stolen away by uh, Joyce, but her pass is going to be Aaron. It's going to come out of the stick way too soon, but it is picked up by Penfield. 
So Penfield does retain possession with 2.22 left to play here in the final three. Canandaigua will improve to 8-0 and drop Penfield to 2-7. I'm telling you, this she, she's she's already she's already won the Henrietta Haas Pittsburgh Haas Player of the Game. Uh, I think a couple times she's won the she's won the Dodge Ram Bighorn Athlete of the Week as well. She's pretty much the I would have to call her the more decorated, accoladed. I, I know it's not a real word; it's a spasm in it. Accoladed individual for Canada Girls Lacrosse thus far this season. She brings it right down the slot. She comes down on toss right to the 20 yard line. And she does a nice little dodge getting away from everybody and lets it go. And she's going to get number seven with 131 left to play. So Lip Short, Lip Short knocks down another one. And <laughs> that was just all her. She just. I'm telling you, man, that was all Liv. That was all Liv. She, she didn't need any help on that one. Got by a couple of defenders. Oh, wait a second. No, they'll wipe it off the board and she'll get, she'll get a uh, free position. So Liv Short with a free position lets it go. Oh, she's going to pass it over to Hannah Davis. And then Hannah Davis is going to get the beat. So Hannah Davis, Hannah Davis, her fourth. Ball and to number comes one, from Liv Short. So that'll be uh, her fourth. Luke Shore with an, with an apple. Is that her first apple? I believe that's her first assist. But that one's going to come at 1 to 25. And now Canandaigua does lead 13 to 7. So as I said, Canandaigua will improve. Hey, now I'm gonna, it, 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 here's my situation. Here's my situation. Jeremy, I'll tell you my situation. I try and share the wealth. I try and give the player the game. I don't like giving the player the game to the same people over and over and over. But Liv Short, she scores, what, eight goals, six, six goals. How do you ignore that? Here's Abby Harris at the draw. Heron, uh, Liv Short, Hannah Davis. You know, I, I can only give the player the game and, and gladiator to them so many times. So I have to find other things. I have to find other ways to try and justify giving someone an accolade too. So, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'll, I'll see who I can, uh, you know, slide that uh, Henrietta Hotz, Pittsburgh Hotz player of the game to. Um, I'm pretty sure I know who I want to name the Dodge Ram or the Dodge Jeep. Here's the issue. And Pittsburgh, or Pittsburgh. Yeah, strike, strike three, Spaz Man, you're out. That was Penfield ends the bleeding. I believe, I could be wrong, I believe it was for Clarence. It comes at 40.8 to make it 13 to 8. I'm not sure. I think it was. Could be wrong. Waiting for uh, waiting for Marky to shout it out. But uh, I'm pretty sure who I'm going to give the Dodge Jeep Gladiator to. And I'll give it to her right now. I'm going to give it to her. She's had a great game defensively. She's had a... I believe he gave it to M. 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 Alexander. So I'm going to give the uh, the the, uh, the Jeep Gladiator to Carolina. And Carolina is going to win that dog. So they get to they get to Lola Shore. And Lola Shore is going to knock down her six. So Lola Shore gets her sixth of the game. And it's going to come at 27.1 <laughs> right off of the draw. So Canada with another draw to make it 14-8. And you know what? Here's what I'm going to do, dude. I'm going to go call Henrietta Hotz, Pittsburgh Hotz player of the game. To Rachel Bennett and Lola Shore for scoring goals that weren't Liv Shore, weren't Hannah Davis. Does that make sense? How's that? There you go. Spread the wealth around a little bit. There you go. Henrietta Hotz, Pittsburgh Hotz, co-players of the game, Rachel Bennett and Lola Shore, and the uh, Matt at the Motors Jeep Gladiator is going to be Caroline Lyle. There we go. That way I spread the love. 
and everybody's going to be happy. Canadigma is going to hold on right here defensively and eat the Patriots from being able to score again 14 to 8. Canadigma is going to pick up the dub. Canadigma winning 14 to 8. So we'll